Thank you for coming. That light is bright. If I'd have known we were videoing, I'd have done my hair. So I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So you just got to, yeah, you just got to take it. Uh, so my charge today is to talk about the anatomy and the biomechanics. So try to define what the problem is, what solutions we have for it, and then why we feel the solution that we're presenting today is better. And so uh, hopefully I can do that in a um, concise way that, that's understandable. So when we talk about lesser toe pathology, so uh, PIPJ joint uh, hammer toes or MTP pathology, it's rampant in society. So to statistically, 350,000 MTP procedures performed in the U.S. per year and 500,000 PIPJ joint procedures performed uh, uh, per year in the U.S. And as you can see, it's more prominent in uh, females than males by about four to five um, times. The etiology, there's multiple thoughts as to why this happens and where it comes from. Uh, all of it kind of comes from an overloading of that second MTP or that second uh, metatarsal lung or abnormal parabola is one of the uh, main causes. Hypermobility of the first ray or HAV, I look at that as the same effect. The, depending on whom you read, that first ray complex should take about 70% of the body weight as we propulse off. So if there's any abnormality to that first ray, it automatically shifts to the next ray, which is the second, and the second takes on this overload and over time uh, could fail. Uh, Pes plano valgus has been described, genetic predisposition, then injury. If you have an injury to that second MTP area, that plantar plate complex, that over time causes continued um, uh, degradation of that tissue, and then it starts to to uh, fail. When we talk about metatarsal parabola, it's been described uh, by Hardy and Chapman as uh, plus or minus two millimeters to the corresponding metatarsals. And we all remember from school that kind of cascading effect that, effect that you're supposed to have uh, from one to two to three and down to the uh, lessers. Uh, Wow, in a paper in 2012, looked at plantar plate injuries and plantar plate repairs. They had 160, 106 feet in, in 88 uh, patients. Of those, 97 had intraoperative tears. And what they noticed, the ones with intraoperative tears had significant increase in the metatarsal uh, protrusion angle of the second. They had an increase in the intermetatarsal angle greater than 12. And they had that medial splaying, you know, in that closed kinetic chain where you see that second uh, toe kind of uh, go into varus against the um, first. So what they propose from this statement is if you see those three components with pain, there's a good chance you have an intraoperative tear of that um, plantar plate. When we look at the radiographs, this is just depicting that uh, cascading effect or that uh, parabola, whether it be in the normal or abnormal uh, parameters. So the whole uh, focus is around this plantar plate. So what is it? I remember uh, being a resident, we never talked about the plantar plate. When we had this, we would release the entire soft tissue contents around the base of the proximal phalanx, do a metatarsal osteotomy, usually a shortening, and then pin it and hopefully it all scarred down. But nobody was specifically talking about the plantar plate or, or um, uh, describing it as an abnormality. So the plantar plate, for those who haven't seen it directly, it's this broad, thick, trapezoidal ligament type structure. It kind of cradles the metatarsal head and you can see that uh, depicted uh, pretty well here as the um, uh, plantar plate. 